The following podcast is a mass media production. Hey, this is Chad Namiro. And I'm Kelly Namiro. Welcome to the Balancing Chaos Podcast, a lifestyle podcast where we will interview guests about wellness, business, and just about everything in between. Our goal is to help you develop a lifestyle that promotes health, wholeness, and success. Through our conversations, we hope to inspire you to live a beautiful, full, and joyful life as you navigate balancing the chaos. We hope you enjoy. You guys, it's our very first episode of the Balancing Chaos podcast. And before we bring on any of our expert guests, we wanted to start by sharing more about us, especially since you don't know Chad very well. (laughs) (laughs) So in this episode, we will allow you to get to know us better by having us interview each other. And let me promise you, there's some (laughs) spicy questions. (laughs) You're going to hear about how we first met, when we got engaged, and how we decided to start a family. We'll share our perspectives on life, our values, you know, some of the daily practices we both deploy, and our passion. We hope you enjoy this episode, and we hope that you subscribe and stick around to listen to all of our incredible guests this season. Hey listeners, if you're looking for a jeweler you can trust for all your jewelry needs, the Jewelers of Las Vegas is the place to go. From diamonds, jewelry, engagement rings, timepieces, all jewelry repairs, and custom design, the Jewelers of Las Vegas has been Nevada's most trusted jeweler since 1976. Seriously, whenever I need something custom or there's something that I want that isn't available online, I always text Natalie because she's a family friend and they're family owned and operated. They're dedicated to giving the best customer service. And I can tell you that firsthand because I've been working with them for so many years. They specialize in custom design, like I said, and I love that they have their own manufacturing facility here on site in Vegas. So they do everything right here. So you can see what you're getting right away. Yeah, they have the largest selection of diamonds, engagement rings, and jewelry in Las Vegas, and they carry luxury watch brands. I buy virtually all Kelly's gifts <laughs> through, through the jewelers. Like my push present and my Christmas presents, Chad got all of that stuff through the jewelers. Most importantly, they'll always take care of you. You can go to their website, www.thejewelers.com, or you can call or text, which I love. Texting is the new way of living. 702-382-1234 for more information or to see their locations. Tell them Kelly or Chad sent you. Since so many of our listeners know me really well because of Instagram, and sometimes I show you too. Sometimes. Yes. Yes. When you must. (laughs) I want them to be able to get to know you better on this episode. You know, so when we have other guests, people feel like they really know you on a deeper level. So in your own words, tell me how we met. So we we met in college. We both went to the University of Southern California. Uh, They used to have a good football team. (laughs) Fate uh, happened. We both weren't supposed to be there. We weren't supposed to be there. We both, well, you know, we both transferred is, is what you're saying. Right. So and you we're transferred both too because. to get in at the first time, <laughs> which is really what happened. But I was a bit older, so I was graduating, and I think you were a sophomore, right? That's right. Um, and and we, you were actually in your fifth year. I double majored. That's like valid. But yes, I was <laughs> in my fifth year. Um, some of the transfer credits didn't come through, <laughs> but we met at the most romantic place that you could meet—a fraternity house. Uh, and and as as I remember it, it was it was during a party, um, and uh, you know I, I I I think we had seen each other before or maybe talked briefly, but I think it was the first time we really actually had like a full conversation and you know probably probably built the attractiveness, if you will. Because you were dating one of my sorority sisters at the time. I was, yeah. I think you were dating one of my fraternity brothers. <laughs> no. Uh, you always like act like you weren't, but <laughs> you were because he came to Vegas. Uh, so, yeah, that's how we met. And then um, we started off as friends. Yeah. And uh, do you want me to go into that? We started off as friends, and then you broke up with my sorority sister to date me. That's right. <laughs> that's right. We won't. Thou shall not be named. <gasps> All right. So from there, we dated for almost three years. Mm -hmm. And then when I was about to graduate, we broke up like a series of (laughs) times. Um, And so we broke up for good for almost two years. Who broke up with who? Um, You you broke up with me, to be fair. 
but I think the ship <laughs> was going down. Both engines were out for a couple <laughs> months. I think we had both had a lot of growing and changing to do, and I honestly did not think that, you know, we were ever going to get back together and get married. But after, you know, dating somebody else for a year or so, I realized that you were my soulmate and I didn't have the kind of chemistry with anyone else that I had with you because you're my best friend. And, I, you know, I'm getting like a little bit <laughs> emotional here. I like you too. Here. I like you too. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, I think like on that note though, I think one of the hardest things, you know, especially when you're in love is, is, is sometimes the timing is everything in life. I, totally. I certainly believe that. And, 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 Sometimes you really do have to let those you love most go and let them go figure out who they are and what they want to be. And, and you know, if you truly love each other, it'll, it, it'll come back. And, and sometimes it doesn't, and that's okay too. But I truly believe that if we hadn't broken up and we didn't go our separate ways and grow separately, yeah. um, you know, maybe we would be together, but we wouldn't be nearly this happy. So. Yeah, I think we were both really immature in those two years. Yeah, especially you, but me too. <laughs> two, <laughs> the time that I spent in New York living there and you, you know, growing and living by yourself in L.A., we changed a lot. And, you know, ultimately when I was 26 and I think you were almost 30, we got back together. So tell our listeners that story. How did we get back together? So we both had dated uh, separately, um, Other pretty people. serious relationships. Yeah. Um, yours was more serious as we've discussed. Oh Jesus. Uh, John. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, honestly, I didn't think we would ever really speak again, uh, aside from like a birthday text here and there, you know, I mean, the idea of getting back to together was never in my mind. We, yeah. we truly had like gone our separate ways. I mean, that's the truth of it. So, you sent me a text message that said something to the tune of like, Hey, you try to like be very informal about it as <laughs> if it was normal. Um, I think I said, I miss you. Yeah. You started with, Hey, and then I think you moved on. You, you, you we both are emotional people. You moved pretty quickly towards what you wanted. Which is, <laughs> you know, I want you back in my life essentially, but yeah, it moved very rapidly. I think I was out in Vegas within, I don't know, two weeks, less than that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, what year is that? 2016? Yeah. Yeah. And so we were married two years later and, you know, now we have a kid. And So let's talk about there. that really quick. So tell everyone, because I don't even know this myself, when did you know that you wanted to marry me? And then, like, how you proposed? Because I always, like, I, you, you guys, I'm a little bit controlling and I never wanted to be proposed to like at a restaurant or in a public place. I was very anti that. <laughs> I just wanted it to be us. So, um, I've never really shared the story even on Instagram. So tell us about when you knew you wanted to marry me and how you proposed. Yeah. So I knew I wanted to marry you when you instructed me that the time had come. <laughs> 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 Your family also instructed me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but you you were clear. And, and you know, that, that happens. Because sometimes, guys, you know, we, we don't want to take on the responsibility. That does happen, guys. And that doesn't mean we're bad people. So um, I, I knew I wanted to marry you before we even got back together. Like, when you're apart from someone, and especially when you've dated other people, you really get to analyze, you know, what you like, what you don't like, um, why you miss people. You know, not just the romantic aspect, but the fact that you're, like, my best friend. And so I think we both knew right when we about got back together, it was headed in that direction. But, yeah, from, from the onset. Um, but I think guys are different than girls and that girls kind of grow up potentially always thinking about that day. Whereas guys, I, you know, I don't think think about it as much. And mm -hmm. so um, I think probably about six to eight months in. Uh, probably when I moved to Vegas is when I really started thinking about, you know, what that would entail and how I would do it and that kind of thing. So pretty, pretty early on. I mean, we had the luxury of dating many years before. So how'd you do it? You know, guys don't overcomplicate things. My original plan was uh, involved a series of flights and, and uh, scavenger hunts and, and things of that nature. It was a logistical nightmare, so I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it. Uh, you know, keep things simple. I ended up just doing it on the beach, which is, you know, what you love most. And so we were in Santa Barbara 
uh, and it was it was around Thanksgiving, and I knew I wanted both our families to be involved at least you know within a few days of each other, and we were there with my family, and we could go see your family right after. So I knew it. I knew I wanted to do it on a beach. I knew I wanted our dogs to be involved, and and that was you know I was kind of gonna let the rest happen naturally, and so yeah, I mean, we were just walking down. I don't know exactly the name of the beach, but it's, it's right below Santa Barbara. And uh, Tommy jumped up on around. my pants, got me all dirty. Yeah. This yeah. was pre-traveler, so we didn't have to worry about the drool. But Pre-trav. It yes. was very special because it was just us and the two dogs at the time, which was... Yeah, you got to know your audience. You know, I, I knew you didn't want, like, drones flying around, so... <laughs> <laughs> no flash mob. Um, all right, last question about us. How did you know that you wanted to start a family? And describe the feeling of what it was like when West was born. Yeah. So, again, I was instructed that I'm not getting any <laughs> younger and that it was time for me to <laughs> give you what, in fact, you wanted. I'm kidding. You know, you, you know, to be transparent, this caused, I wouldn't say issues, but, you know, we both knew we wanted a family. I think there might have been. Uh, some miscommunication on when. Yeah, totally. Um, so it happened very right. fast. I mean, you definitely pretty much, I think on the flight back from the honeymoon, we're beginning <laughs> to prepare. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, mostly. We always talked about having a family. We always knew we wanted a big family. And so it's always something I wanted. Again, I don't know. I think maybe guys don't think about the, the timing aspect of it as much. I certainly didn't. Um, but I knew I think that you always tell me that you, you need it to be pushed. Like, you, yeah, you... I really did. Honestly, I think guys operate under a different set of rules, right? Uh, you know, I think there's an internal biological clock, obviously, yeah. you know, it's not as, as, as present with guys. So, you know, it was mostly driven from a timing perspective, um, yeah. by you, to be honest, but it, it's the most wonderful thing in the world. And, and aside from our marriage, you know, the minute that he entered this world, I mean, will always be, you know, the best moment of your life. There's no way to ever describe it, uh, how much you love them and how wonderful it is to, to do it with someone you love. And so, you know, I, I, some guys wait too long, I think. You know, I, it's a beautiful thing and there's really nothing to be afraid of, I guess is what I'm getting at. Quickly pausing this episode of the show to let you know that my private one-on-one -on -one coaching container is now open. Over the course of 2021, I'm only going to be working with a small select group of women to help them return to feeling like they're at home in their bodies, to help them lose resistant weight, to feel less anxious and more energized. My one-on-one -on -one coaching is truly for you if you're tired of feeling depleted, overwhelmed, bloated, or like you're just not enough. There's no magic pill or cleanse or detox that's going to work. You are really ready to make that commitment to yourself and create the habits that will lead you to hormonal balance and vibrant health. I'm here to help you get to the root cause and create meaningful change. If you're feeling called to work with me so that you can finally feel at home in your body, head to the link in the show notes to learn more. So I'll ask you some questions now, my dear. Uh, <laughs> Creep. <laughs> what what drives you? You know, what? why are you doing this, uh, taking on this new part of your career? You know, you obviously work for your family. Um, mm -hmm. You worked for an event planner in New York. You've tried a number of different things. You know, I can attest to the fact that you're probably the happiest you've ever been and you're the most driven because it really is your passion. And so, you know, what brought you to this point, I guess, is what I'm asking. You know, um, I love working for my family business because I, I got to be with them every day, but I wasn't passionate about what I was doing. Um, and yeah. I think there was really a gift in me being sick for those the years that I was and not feeling well for the years that I didn't feel well. Um, I mean, you know it best. We broke up when I was at the height of my thyroid issue because I was so irritable, I was so moody, I was so grumpy. Like, and there was That's a whole... why I broke up with, <laughs> so the fans know. I'm just <laughs> um, and there was a whole host of other issues going on. But when I was able to really transform my life um, in the last, you know, four to five years, and understand that it didn't have to be the way that it did. 
and you didn't have to feel like shit every day when you woke up. Right. Um, I really quickly realized that I wanted to share that with other people. And when I did, I got such a huge response, you know, that other people were feeling like this and I wanted them to know that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of what led me into going to get my health coaching certification, which took me a year. I did that during the year that I was pregnant with West. Um, so that I, really felt comfortable and I had the knowledge to share the science behind what works yeah. with people. Um, so I did that. And in May, I launched Wellness by Kelly, where I have health coaching clients and a membership program. And um, on different levels, totally different levels, I share with people either one-on-one -on -one or through my video content you know, ways that they can change their li lifestyle and diet to make them feel better. And you don't have to be living off a prescription or a pill because that's never going to get to the root cause of the problem. Yeah. Um, and so what I love to share is the lifestyle hacks that can make you feel the most energized and feel the best in your body that you ever have. So that, that's really what I, I love to do because it's what changed my life. And I think it's what's changed my relationships, even with you and my family. I, I'm a happier, better person now that I share and get to do what I love. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's where I get the most fulfillment. So yeah, so working directly with clients probably then, right? Having that one-on-one -on -one interaction and teaching them and going back and learning. Absolutely. I mean, I love being able to teach people one-on-one -on -one and yeah. get have them get the results. That's like my goal is having people get results. But I also really love working with my membership program. And even though there's hundreds of people in there who, you know, I may not know all of them, I love that they're using the content to make themselves feel better, using the meditations to get their mind in the right place, because that's where it really all starts is where your perspective is and choosing your own happiness. And, you know, they're using the plant-based recipes, they're using the low impact workouts and they're feeling this sense of balance. I love that too. Um, so I love working with people on all the levels and even the people who aren't involved in my programs, who are just my Instagram followers, um, who are making the celery juice and doing their fruit first and tagging me. I love I love seeing you guys too. It's, it's all any of you guys, you know, getting results and feeling better than you were feeling before. That's means the world to me. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I grew up like vegetarian. You I know. grew up more of, you know, oh, yeah, Italian, there was meat every meal, dairy, meat, you know, I, there's a lot of information out there and I guess more focused on like the diet aspect. Let's say what's yeah. one area or book or you know, I guess blog aside from yours that people can really start to gain. Cause there's a lot of misinformation around diet. We both agree about that when, totally. you know, what would you recommend for someone just starting to, to get into a potentially plant-based diet, you know, to get their information and then how to start. Look, here's the deal. You know, when it comes to eating a plant-based diet, um, I don't think that the way I do things is what's going to work for everybody. Like right. I have tons of clients who still use meat, but they use it more as a topping rather than as the main entree oh, and the mean. star of the show. Yeah. Like you, and, um, you don't eat it at every meal and, right. you know, there's a way to start doing that in, you know, where you're removing it once a day and then you're removing it once, you know, and you're, where you're only having it at one meal a day and then you're only having it, you know, a couple times a week, um, really making it a slow and steady process and increasing the whole foods that are plants in your diet is the way to go. Um, when it comes to a book, the best book that I have read on adding more plants into your diet and a, as a why is called how not to die. And it goes into all of the health conditions, chronic diseases, really yeah. awful things that happen when you're eating the processed food and large quantities of meat. Um, so I think that if you're looking for some sort of, you know, inspiration as mm -hmm. to why to go plant-based, if you're looking to really improve your health, that is a great place to start. Okay. Um, 
If you could relive a year in your life, what year would you choose? Oh, gosh, that's so tough. Um, I don't think anyone wants to live 2020 aside from our, <laughs> our son you know, being born. You know, I have actually loved 2020. It's been a really great opportunity for me to focus on my business, yeah. to connect with our son, right, um, yeah. and to be home without a lot of the other distractions that I would normally have. So <laughs> I've loved 2020. Um, I think that if I could relive a year of my life, this is really a double-edged sword, right? Because if I hadn't gone through all of the things that I had, I wouldn't be here today. But if I could go back into my early 20s in college when I was so hard on myself, when I was really facing a lot of the uh, eating disorder, restrictive eating patterns that I was in, working at that like perfectionist mentality and never giving myself a break, um, you know, those would probably be the years I would, or the when that all started, the year that I would relive so that I could go back and just tell myself to be more gentle on myself. But again, like I said, I, you know, I wouldn't be here today helping other women and helping other young girls get through what they're going through. And my life would be totally different if I hadn't gone through that myself. So, um, any young women out there, I guess all I'll finish this question off with is to say, be, be softer with yourself, be more gentle with yourself and it's okay not to be perfect because none of us are. Yeah, I thought you were going to say when we first started dating, so that was a little bit <laughs> of a surprise to me. <laughs> well, that is, you know, that is around the time that we were first started dating, too. I was 19, so there was, there was good and bad there. There really was. Yeah. Um, so for you, when it comes to your career, um, you know, back when we were in college, online shopping really wasn't as big as it is now. I mean, especially after COVID, that's like all the only thing people are doing is online shopping. Um, and when you got your business degree, how did you know that you wanted to start a career in e-commerce versus something else all of your peers were doing, like joining an accounting firm or a consulting firm that's so, you know, generic? I didn't really, honestly. I, I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. I think like yeah, I think it's partly related to the educational system in this country, but but it's partly related just to being young. Like I really didn't have a great idea of what I wanted to do even in my senior year. And so I didn't really know. And as you know, you know, I worked in real estate for a short amount of time and then I realized that's not what I wanted to do. And I ended up, you know, traveling and I kind of got lucky, honestly, you know, but I think taking the time to reset and really figure out which career move I wanted to take is important. I think you know, and there's, there's financial aspects and all this, but I think sometimes people move a little too quickly. Mm -hmm. um, if you love what you do, the money will usually always come. And so I, I'd like to think that I really approached it that way. And I did a lot of research while I was traveling and, you know, I knew, I knew the online shopping, you know, re online driven retail was never going away. It was only going to grow. Um, you know, it's hard to imagine it, it was going to grow this fast, especially in this pandemic, but I knew I had an affinity for that. Uh, you know, I had grown up like listing things on eBay. I love the whole process of that. And so I actually, through a connection in school, got connected uh, with a company called Magento, who's now owned by Adobe. And that they, at that time, they were really the four, you know, the, the foremost competitor in, uh, in the e-commerce space. And so I didn't know much about it. Um, you know, back then when you wanted to build a website, you kind of just had someone go code it for you, whereas now there's actually platforms. And so... Um, yeah, that's how I got into it, and and it's not like I had any prior education. I learned everything when I first started, and you know it's a tremendously fast-growing business. And uh, I think one of the advantages as a millennial is like we're kind of the pioneers. You know, it's not like like an accounting firm, like you mentioned, where you have all this tribal knowledge that you need to learn. It's it moves so fast that you know younger generations like are the pioneers, are the experts, and so I was able to kind of get in early, but, you know, to be, to be honest, uh, I got lucky, you know, I've been a part of two extremely fast growing businesses and that will always help your career. I mean, that's the truth of it. So for all of us online shoppers, we're dying to know what is the next big thing? Can we expect for our packages to be dropped off by drones? 
You know, it's possible. It's the FAA that's really <laughs> holding it up, honestly. I mean, when you think about Amazon and, and, and the e-commerce e space in general, I mean, it's only going to get more and more sophisticated. So it'll probably start with electric vehicles, and then it'll move to autonomous vehicles. And then, yeah, honestly, it probably will move to some sort of autonomous drone delivery. I mean, no one wants to admit it, but... It, Errors in my business are always human related. You know, mm -hmm. computers are more perfect. That's mm -hmm. why Amazon and many others have gone robotic. So if you can streamline that, and it's it's sad because it, it it you know is not the best for job creation, but you know that's that's certainly what they're headed for, and and others as well. So that's possible, probably ten years out. Um, other than that, you know what what's a huge trend in, in online shopping is just AI or machine learning. I mean, the it's incredible the amount of knowledge that that a retailer would have around you through multiple channels and say that they know everything about their consumers and so they're able to offer extremely targeted. So they uh, send messaging. us like push, push notifications and stuff like that for stuff that they know yeah. that they want us to buy. Yeah, yeah, and they know exactly who you are. They know that you've been looking at an item, you know, and you might not have bought it yet. <laughs> they might know, um, you know, a discount that, that might push you over the edge. I mean, uh, it's extremely sophisticated at this point. It's kind of like know. this social dilemma, but for shopping. Yeah. Which is even more dangerous for our bank accounts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and good for me. So keep shopping. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you mentioned to our audience that, you, your career really started in real estate, and you have just started a little venture outside of your career in real estate again. Um, so tell us about why you think that's a lucrative space. Yeah, so my best friend and I uh, just recently bought a, bought a multifamily property, and then I own a few others as well. Uh, you know, real estate is is lucrative because uh, there are 7 billion people on earth and that number is unlikely to go down. Everyone needs a place to live and people largely want to live in certain areas. And mm -hmm. so um, there's a lot less volatility in that market. It's very, very predictable um, in my experience. And so, yeah, um, it's, it's kind of the American dream, right? Owning mm -hmm. land, owning, you know, a piece of the earth, uh, you know, is, is a lot. It means a lot to me. And so I enjoy the market. I enjoy the business. And, um, yeah, it's really not going away. Looking for the trusted resource for luxury Las Vegas real estate? The Ivan Share Group is the expert in the Las Vegas luxury real estate market, specializing in high-end homes and luxury high-rise properties. The Ivan Share Group is a dynamic team of leading real estate experts dedicated to client satisfaction. Their extensive expertise in Las Vegas and Henderson allows them to help luxury home buyers find their dream homes no matter what their needs are. They're dedicated to helping you buy, sell, or invest. Contact Ivan and his team directly at 702-315-0223 or visit www.isluxury.com to learn what they do differently. The Ivan Share Group is luxury and your trusted resource for luxury Las Vegas real estate. So let's get into how you've got everything going on from being, you're trying to be a present dad, you're trying to be, well, you are a sales executive, and you're also getting your MBA and what, like we just mentioned, you've got a real estate, a couple of real estate ventures on the side. So how do you prioritize every day and organize your life in a way that you're being the most efficient? <laughs> I'm not anywhere, you know, obviously, as you know, I'm not as regimented as, as you. Um, and so I, I kind of, you know, I have a plan for the day. Opposites attract. Opposites do attract. Say. And I'd like to be more like that. I think it would, it would probably alleviate at least some of the, the, the stress when things get a little overwhelming. But I think that we challenge each other to be the best versions of ourselves. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm always trying to get you to, you know, slow down, slow down, relax more. You know, have some predefined time off. Yeah, uh, and I wouldn't say you're pushing me to be busier, but you're always um, motivating. You know, motivating for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I don't know. You know, it's not as regimented. Like you said, I don't have this like really predefined morning routine, but I think generally eating healthy uh, and getting a workout in in the morning is, is, is key. And like that just sets your, you up. You know, mm-hmm. I think you definitely need to have a well-structured life. Um, you need to know when to be on and when to be off. Like, so, you know, you have everything day, in your Google calendar. You live and die by Google that calendar. thing. <laughs> yeah. You have to have like personal time in there. If you meditate lunch, I mean, it, it's a little sad, I think, but that's what it's come to in this day and age. And yeah. so you got to make sure, you know, it's there and carved out. But yeah, I mean, you know, for everyone at home, you know, I, I don't have Instagram, right? Like, no. so I think I, it's a big time saver for you. It is. I still tag your old account, but yeah. So no one's home. Forgive anyone who has reached out, <laughs> but no, I, at the end of the day, I think we both have learned, you know, kids, uh, they, they are, have a desire an incredible amount of attention and that grows almost every day. You know, our, our son's 10 months old. And so you really gotta, it's really hard, but you gotta learn how to turn it off and like very, really be present, you know, and there's always something you could be, be doing, but you'd, you you got to carve out that time. I think that is both of our number one priority. That's a number one is, is yeah. time with him. So yeah, without question. Yeah. Um, what are a few morning practices that set you up for a successful day? We just talked about like prioritizing and organizing, but you know, you have your juice. What else, what are some other things that you do? Yeah, you know, if you have the means to to have celery juice every morning, I, I think it's great. Honestly, I was probably a little dismissive of it at first, but like, uh, energizes you. You know, helps in other areas. So like, I actually really do value that every morning, and it, it feels a bit strange if I don't have it. Mm-hmm. And so that that's definitely up there. Um, it's hard, and I break this all the time. But try not to look at your phone when you first wake up. You know. Um, I'm guilty, like I just mentioned, but if you can try to not look at it for the first hour, try to, yeah, you know, I'm not huge on these really set in stone, uh, you know, processes, but like try to just, you know, kind of take things slow when you wake up, mm-hmm. think about what you're grateful for, you know, at the end of the day, every, every day is a gift. So like, you know, kiss your wife, kiss your children, yeah. like, you know, kind of think about that stuff. And if you do, in my opinion, it just sets up the mindset for the rest of the day. Um, Versus, you know, getting right out of bed, right to your phone. It just, you know, it's it's not as effective for me. I mean, getting right out of bed onto your phone, I think, is what raises people's cortisol through the roof. Because then you're yeah. literally on someone else's time. You're not on your own time anymore. Yeah. You're, you're stressed out about who you have to get back to, when you have to get back to them, the appointments, the things that you have to do. It's just, if we don't do that and we take that time in the morning to allow ourselves you know, to slowly wake up and, and really be more present and more mindful about how we want to feel in the rest of our day, Yeah, it's going to be life changing. It's not just going to change your morning. It's going to change your whole life because being mindful in your morning routine is what sets you up to be more aware and more connected to all of the decisions you're making, more intuitive, you know, with what your values are and what you're really going to be connected to throughout your entire day. So, yeah. And like, I think everyone wants to meditate, you know, few do, (laughs) it's very hard, but just getting up in the morning, um, honestly, and and like meditating doesn't mean you have to have this predefined like hour with uh, a podcast playing, you know, like Mm -hmm. you can just be the act of trying to calm your mind and breathe and like doing that throughout the day, especially in the morning, I think is key. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so not to get like overly philosophical, but mm-hmm. you know, that's kind of how I am at times. Uh, at the end of your life, what do you want your greatest accomplishment to be? My kids. I want my kids yeah. to feel like we prioritized them and like they came out as the best versions of themselves. I want them to be free to do what they want to do and what they're passionate about. And I also want them to have enough structure to, you know, grow up and be motivated and determined to give back and do good in the world. Um, I think it's such a delicate balance of, you know, watching over what they're doing and making sure they're doing the right thing, but also 
allowing them to be who they are and, um, you know, not being too controlling, but also not being too woo woo wishy washy. It's going to be really hard and it's going to be super challenging. But I think both of us being the most present versions of ourselves and allowing them to know that we're there no matter what they need yeah. is the first key to achieving that goal. Yeah. It, 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 a common study has shown that like the biggest regret people have, you know, at the end of their lives, usually mm-hmm. it's like they work too hard and they didn't you know, spend enough time or in their opinion, enough time. Totally. You know, so it's a, it's a tough balance. Our society rewards and incentivizes very, you know, success and a breakneck pace. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, I I absolutely want my business to be successful. That's definitely one of my goals, but I know, you know, what matters most to me is West from the moment he was born. That's just been my number one priority. Um, and while I would love, I, I would love to see my business flourish and I, I love seeing it grow every day. It's, it's been the most amazing thing. Um, I want to be able to balance them in a really, you know, beneficial way. And when I say beneficial, I mean beneficial to my son so that I have time that is deliberately off, that I'm with him, and then I have time that I'm deliberately working. Um, So everything is really thought out and nothing is, you know, just all over the place. Yeah. Um, When it comes to parenting, I think we both believe in quality over quantity. So what does that mean to you? How are you the most present version of yourself when you're with West? I think we already kind of touched on that, like you not having Instagram, but. Yeah. I mean, my, my love language is quality time, Mm -hmm. which is like, as a side note, I think it actually is really important for you to understand what, well, what you are, but. What you are. What you are. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I, I think that's what it is. Honestly, it's, it's like, Undivided attention. That's really what it comes down to. I mean, you know, multitasking uh, is a friend and an enemy. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, kids are incredibly intuitive. You learn that very fast. So undivided attention and, and quality time, I think, is what every kid wants from their parents uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Everyone wants to know, what's it like growing up on Vegas? Because everyone asks me, oh, how, you know, is that where the strip, you know, you go down there all the time, you know, what's it like? <laughs> Oh my growing gosh. up here. It's so funny. You know, I was asked that all the time when our, my family went on vacation when we were kids and I'm still, I feel like we still are now. We go out places and we see people, they're like, you live in Vegas? Yeah, it's not common. Do you live in a hotel? And the answer is always no. Um, and to be honest, as a kid, it wasn't even that cool. It was, you know, normal. we never, we didn't really go down to the strip that often. And it mm-hmm. was just like suburbia. Like honestly, what it would have been like growing up where you grew up in Phoenix. Um, it's really the same. We would, you know, go ride our scooters and mm-hmm. until I think I was in high school, probably my last year of high school, that's when things got a little wild and me and my girlfriends would get our fake IDs and head out to this trip. No comment. Yeah, you know, but um, I got my partying years in young, and yeah. <laughs> I was over it by the time I was like twenty three. Yeah, you're you're and you're well experienced growing up in Vegas. I'm sure by the time you get to college. Oh yeah, you, you know, know that. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So, should we do some quick fire questions with each other? Even though we already know the answers to these, I think it'll be fun so that our audience knows. The answer. So what we can do is I'll ask the question and then we can both answer it. Okay. I'll let you answer first and then I'll answer second. Sounds good. And then you can ask the next one. So we're kind of alternating. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah. All right. I answered the first one though. Okay. Then you can ask me that one. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. What is your morning routine? All right. So. It's very specific. I like a good detailed specific plan. (laughs) You know this. So the, the more details and the more planned, the better for me. Okay, you guys? It's more anxiety producing for me. <laughs> so I wake up around 6, 6.15. I'll meditate then. Sometimes I'll meditate just in bed. Sometimes I'll go up to my little altar and just sit there and turn on a guided meditation. Mm. From there, I get up. 
I go into the kitchen. Hopefully West is still asleep. I make celery juice. Between my celery juice and the next thing I eat, which is my fruit, fruit first, I make the dog's breakfast. I heat up West's bottle and I make his breakfast so that when he does wake up, it's ready to go. So that usually takes about 30 minutes, which is the perfect amount of time for the celery juice to digest. And then I have my morning fruit. So that's like 30 minutes into me waking up. And fruit is really great because it cleanses your digestive system. And if you eat fruit later in the day, it kind of causes this like traffic jam, um, you know, where you can get bloating and upset digestion. So it's best to have it first thing in a day so that you can beat the cravings by giving your body the sugar that it needs and also really give your body the energy and cellular hydration that it needs, detoxifying everything else. So you know that we have a big plate of fruit. You could just have a celery juice later in the day. That'll clean you right out. You know, that's why you do it first thing in the morning. (laughs) That's why we have this routine, okay? I'm saying a second celery juice (laughs) if you need to, you know, take a shit. (gasps) Okay. So then after that, Wes will usually be up. I'll go upstairs, give him a bath, um, change his clothes, play a little bit. And then by that time, I come downstairs and I make myself blood sugar balancing breakfast. So that means protein, fat, and carbs. And I'm getting all of those nutrients in, usually with a matcha latte, because you know how much I love my matcha. Um, Because those three things are so important for keeping your hormones nice and balanced and your blood sugar balanced throughout the day. So... That is usually what my morning looks like. And then West and I will go for a walk or I'll try to get a flow in on my mat, some sort of movement before I head back, take a shower and go from there. So it's like World War III if he wakes up before your predetermined time. No, you know, I figure (laughs) out how to make it work. Um, If he wakes up before I get a meditation in, I'll get it in when I have like time during lunch. Um, So it's just... it. My life obviously revolves around him. So if he's up early, plans change. And that was honestly one of the hardest things for me to learn. It was so hard for me to let go of control in that way. So he has been the biggest gift in being my teacher for that. Yeah. So what's the best thing you've eaten this week? This week? Um, That stir fry you made was pretty good today. For lunch? Yeah. I love like teriyaki stir fry. I don't know what the noodles were made out of. They were rice fettuccine noodles. Just rice fettuccine noodles, like some soy-free teriyaki and vegetables, honestly. Yeah. It was good. Thank you. Yeah. I try. You do. You try well. For me, the best thing that I've eaten this week is either, oh my gosh, those cookies, those gluten-free vegan cookies from Aaron McKenna. Those had sugar in them. Yeah, but they were so good. They have like this frosting in between them, like cookie sandwiches. Um, Or I just made a new recipe that's actually going to go up in the member site last night for this cauliflower Alfredo sauce over rice noodles with Mm. broccoli and peas. Yeah, that was good too. Um, So that's going to be up soon. Um, Okay. If you were a color, what would you be? I already know the answer. Orange. You're very vibrant. Yes, I love the outdoors. Yeah. I think the sun has a, you know, a lot to do with that. Yeah, um, it's the color of the Phoenix Suns. I grew up in Arizona. <laughs> I'm not sure. It just always is my favorite color. I think it represents me. I think you're very outgoing, and you have this like very positive energy about you. Whenever people, other people are talking, you know, negatively, or you never want to be involved in that conversation, or you know, conversations that are complaining, I guess is the right word. You're never a part of that. And I think orange like definitely signifies that vibe. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I would be like a purpley blue, like indigo. I think that it is a calming color and that's what I need more energy of in my life. Um, and I like to radiate that out into the universe. Um, so always like giving out what you want to put in and, yeah. Um, I don't know. I've just always been really drawn to that color. I think that like the purple kind of signifies a higher self, mm. which is what I'm always striving to mm-hmm. get to striving yeah. to be. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and the blue is, you know, my favorite thing is the ocean. So that's what it reminds me of. Yeah. 
Um, what is on your nightstand? <sighs> Many things. <laughs> Probably, you know, always a hydro flask, <laughs> so water. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a series of books. I'll usually be reading multiple at the same time. You know, oftentimes not just just one finish onto the next one. Mm -hmm. um, then probably the iPad so I can monitor West because that's what our, <laughs> our baby monitor runs through. But but the phone is 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 you know Far away. ten to twelve feet away. Um, yeah, that's about it. Not anything too interesting, honestly. Okay, so mine is again very detailed, very specific. We like a plan. Right, you like a plan. <laughs> you don't like a plan. <laughs> I'm saying we as in me and my followers here. Okay? Gotcha. So we've got the pillow spray that has lavender. That's super important. Right. Can't live without that. No, can't live without yeah. it. Got like some sort of a facial oil um, because right. my skin it tends to run really dry. Yeah. I have... The cavemen really would have appreciated that. <laughs> we've got a foot cream because, again, my skin is really dry. So I'll put that on with some socks. Um, a lip balm, a lip mask. I like the one by Laneige. I think that's the name of the brand. Um, super hydrating. I like the vanilla one. Um, and then I actually gave this to you last night, the breathe essential oil Yeah. that I put in our diffuser and then I'll rub it on my hands before I go to sleep so that I'm not congested. Right. And a whole stack of books. Um, I like self health books and I also like just novels where I can yeah. kind of relax and stop thinking for a minute. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and usually my nighttime hot chocolate. Yes. <laughs> you know, I need so that every night. It's usually dishes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Give our listeners your best tip for balancing the chaos. You know, it, it, it wouldn't be some sort of regimented plan, honestly. It's, it's just take a deep breath throughout the day. You know, life's not about getting what you want. It's about loving what you have. Like, don't, you know, don't get caught up in it all. Always remind yourself of how good you, know, you have it and what your gifts are because everyone's fortunate, just yeah. oftentimes in different ways. And so you can take on anything, but just always be gracious and, and remember where you came from and, and remember what you have and, if you take even little moments throughout the day, it, it, you know, changes everything. That's really what it comes down to for me. It's no like set, um, plan or, or agenda. That's, that's, it's just staying present. I love that you gave a more like woo woo answer because mine is super. Right. Yeah. You know, I could have guessed that. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'm really glad that you came in and balanced that out. But for me, it's really about keeping everything in my calendar Every single thing, whether it's West's music class or a walk I'm going to take with him in the morning or my meditation practice or my workout or client calls, like every single thing is color coded in my calendar and it is ke what keeps me sane and organized because I have to have even travel time booked in there so that I know that I can get it all done. And that is my best tip to all of you guys. And I know it's not so like... Do you know when you want to sleep in or no. do you have to update that? Okay. I got I to gotta, <laughs> I gotta refresh that. Um, I know that it is not like the beautiful answer that Chad gave, but it's practical and it's real. So It is very practical and real. I also live and die by the calendar. I think you have to in this day and age. Yeah, for so. sure. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. This was so much fun. Um, I hope that you got to know me better. You got to know Chad better. And we are so excited to dive into a bunch of episodes with some really, really great guests coming up in the next couple of months. You guys are going to hear from us once a week. We hope you learn a lot. We hope you take away some real nuggets and that this is giving you the inspiration you need to balance the chaos in your life. Yeah. And from a, a male perspective, you know, we have a ton of different people coming on. There's athletes, there's businessmen. Uh, you know, we're looking to try to offer a bunch of different angles of how to balance the chaos and, and manage your life and, and get better, you know, 1% every day. So we're looking forward to sharing it with you. Hey, thanks for listening. Please make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. You can also connect with us on social media at Wellness by Kelly. Drop us a DM for who you want to hear from. 